Talk Real Estate with Sharon McNamara, sponsored by Boston Connect Real Estate Services. Hi, I'm Sharon McNamara, and you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. Let me share a little bit about my background before we get started. I am the broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate, a boutique real estate firm that is home to over 30 real estate sales and marketing consultants who service home buyers and home sellers throughout Boston, the South Shore, the South Coast, and Cape Cod. Our firm takes pride in assisting our clients in the next chapter of their lives by taking a holistic approach to their real estate endeavors. We believe that every move should be a moving experience. Every week, my real estate team member, Mary Baker, and I, along with the director of Boston Connect Real Estate, Melissa Wallace, provide you with our unique marketing approach to selling homes and share with you our expertise in navigating the home buying process. We like to mix it up sometimes, so not only will you hear our perspective on real estate topics, but you will hear the expert thoughts and opinions of some of our real estate agents at Boston Connect Real Estate and the preferred professionals that we trust. Be part of our roundtable. If you have any questions during the show, please call 781-837-4900. We'd love to talk real estate. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you listen to podcasts at Talk Real Estate Roundtable. If you would like a one-on-one consultation with me and my team or one of the dedicated agents at Boston Connect Real Estate to discuss your real estate needs, you can connect with us at bostonconnect.com or 781-826-8000. Now, sit back, relax, take good notes, and let's talk real estate. And hello to all our South Shore neighbors. My name is Melissa Wallace, and you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. My sidekick, Sharon McNamara, is here in the building, in the house, but she is working on a calendar right now, apparently, right? Yeah. Um, But I do have a very special guest. You did join us probably, what, your first week here at Boston Connect? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, But you are very well known in the community. So I want to reintroduce you. I have Emmy Flaherty. She is a full-time real estate agent here at Boston Connect Real Estate, and she is uh, sort of the the brains of today. I'm going to say that. You're the okay. brains of today. This is, this is, the topic that we're doing today is all about you. Yeah, we're just going to be talking about Emmy Flaherty all day. Um, but Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> I hope, I hope you've uh, geared up for this, but, um, sure. but it sort of was inspired by some things that we've been talking about here in the office, but um, I'm going to give you a moment to sort of reintroduce yourself to all of our listeners and uh, tell everybody who you are, where you service, what you do, all that fun stuff. Okay. Awesome. Good morning, everyone. So I am Emmy Flaherty. I am a resident here in Pembroke and also a full-time realtor here at Boston Connect Real Estate in Pembroke. Um, I have two children in elementary school here in Pembroke, so I am very active in the PTO. Um, I also work with a local dog rescue, and in my spare time, if that is such a thing, (laughs) I have um, several events here at the office. You can always check out my Facebook page, which is Emmy Flaherty Realtor on Facebook. You'll see the events. We've had cookie decorating. We have some candle making coming up. We have... We actually did a blanket knit throw class not too long ago that was really popular, and we have dog photos of the Easter Bunny coming out. Yeah, why don't you give some of those, um, so, like, so, like, how can somebody come to your event, or how do they find it? So, they can find it on Facebook, but mm-hmm. um, what are some of the dates for these events so people can put them in their calendar like Sharon's doing right now? Right, absolutely. <laughs> so, I try to do one a month in the evenings, and then depending on what else we have going on, we do some weekends. So. All of my events are on my Facebook page, which is Emmy Flaherty Realtor. We have cookie decorating. We're going to do St. Patrick's Day themed cookie decorating. That is on March 8th with Blackbird Baking Company, which is also a Pembroke business. And then on March 26th, we are doing dog photos with the Easter Bunny. So you can sign up. We have slots. You can sign up and bring your dog to take a photo with the Easter Bunny. And believe it or not, we did this last year. And it was very, very popular and super cute. Some dogs are terrified of the Easter Bunny, but we made, we made it work. Um, some adults are terrified of the Easter Bunny, and that would be me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think one time one time I had, like, a very bad experience with, like, an Easter Bunny type thing. And now it's, like, it's something that has, um, you know, followed me into my adult life. <laughs> 
<laughs> so um, I will love your event from afar. Okay. Um, but everything else, I, I'm, I'm rooting for you right right up front and center. <laughs> awesome. And I, I, well, I should add, too, because I think sometimes people are like, well, you know, are we going to be mid-cookie decorating and you're going to give me, you know, like a sales pitch? And no, that's not what the events are about. I really just, I like to meet new people. I like to see new faces. And I like to bring people together. So when it's cookie decorating, it's it's cookie decorating. Yeah. And we love that you do your events here at the office. So, um, you know, we bought this building almost four years ago now, uh, um, right in Pembroke Center on Mattachusett Street. And we just, we love having events here as a company. We love when our agents come in and have events. But um, you joined us, what, in October, maybe? Mm -hmm. October, maybe September. And you've had so many events here that we're like, oh, what's Emmy doing this month? What's (laughs) Emmy doing this week? What's what's Emmy doing? (laughs) You know? I know. Well, I call it my home away from home and I, I live right around the corner so it really really does feel like that but if you step through the front door here to me it's it's so welcoming like this isn't your typical office when I describe it to people I say it's not it's not your typical gray cubicles so I actually yeah. made a video and put it on Instagram so if you're wondering like why you they need ho- a tour right go like, to Emmy's Instagram yeah like why <laughs> why are you hosting cookie decorating in a realtor's office you'll you'll know why Just yeah go visit the video I never so my office is upstairs and I never say oh it's in my office I'm going to my office I always say my room <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not because I'm always here but because it's like so comfortable it's like it's mm-hmm. my room like yeah. I'm going to my room I think the only room that has like a like a officey name is like the conference room but yeah we call this what our family room the family and then room. The playroom downstairs because mm-hmm. that's usually where the young professionals meet and yeah you know we play yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah just so you know i'm going on monday oh yeah okay mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. She okay. was invited. Well, I heard about it through the grapevine. She let it slip. <laughs> I did not. You're invited. Well, let our listeners know. On Monday, the young professionals from Boston Connect Real Estate are going to be hanging out at Cask. Right? Yeah, we're going to go to Cask and Flagon in Marshfield like around 5, 30, 6 o'clock. We, we try to get together every month. We've been doing this for a couple of years, and then COVID hit, and you know we were doing it through Zoom, and um, we resumed, I think, last year, whatever. Um, and we try to meet once once. A month um there's no age limit <laughs> that's why i'm invited <laughs> there's no age limit we just call ourselves the young professional where we're young-minded mm-hmm. um individuals who are trying to come together and just sort of collaborate and um you know we work on buyer presentations and you know what's going on in your business and how can we help each other goal setting, um, goal setting and we have accountability partners and stuff so we get together um, usually the first Thursday of the month, but um, January was a little sort of weird with the holidays and kids and everything, so we met late, so we decided that February, instead of having a formal meeting, we were going to just go out and have some drinks and yeah. just enjoy each other's company, so that's so, what we're doing on Monday, so, yeah, so do you want to come our, and say hi to yeah, us? Yeah, I was going to say, all our WATD listeners, Marshfield, right around the corner, maybe Tim, Tim, why don't, I, I'm, I'm not, Tim, I'm so sorry, I, I always forget if you and your partner are married or not is he there hello hello tim Um, i'm sorry what was the question are you are you married Unofficially, happily partnered for uh, seven, six, 17 years now. That's I love that. I, I love that, that too. I, I love that's that. That's probably why I always think that you're married. Yeah. Um, but Thank if you. you. It's like Oprah and Stedman. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Mm, all right. I don't have the fancy gold toilet, but, but yeah. I'll take it. I don't care about the toilet. I'd yeah. rather the money. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, I mean, uh, you know, our crew here is going to be hanging out at Cask and Flagon on Tuesday. So if you and your partner. Oh, I don't Monday. Know if I, like, yes, Monday. Monday, Monday. I don't know if he likes his name announced on the radio or not. Uh, but you can hang out. Go hang out with the Boston Connect crew. Yeah, we're pretty hip. Yeah. <laughs> In their head, they are. We're pretty hip. Yeah, hip to be square. Yeah. yeah All right. For sure. Yeah, no. <laughs> I always say that on the um, outside, I'm a PC, but on the inside, I totally feel like a Mac. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, where are you going with that? Yeah. Just, you know, Macs are a little bit cooler. And that has no pun on my name, but it sort of oh, goes. for Mac the <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Yeah. All right. We're blab- I, we haven't even gotten to our topic. Yeah, We've no, been on for 15 minutes. So, oh, geez, <laughs> time flies. <laughs> time flies when you're having fun and you're mm. a PC or a Mac or whatever you feel like today. <laughs> um, but so we wanted to talk about um, some of the five, five considerations when putting your house on the market. So we've sort of done variations of this show before, you mm-hmm. know, things to 
think about and prepare to get on um, on the market. But we're taking a sort of a different um, approach to it. Mm-hmm. And there was a conversation that was um, happening here at the office. Mm-hmm. I mean, you were involved in that conversation um, that sort of prompted, okay, maybe it's not just all on the realtor. It mm-hmm. is, you know, nobody knows a home better than somebody who lives in it. Mm-hmm. So um, these are sort of some considerations that a seller should be um, thinking about when you know, hiring their Yeah, their putting realtor. a house on the market. Um, and one be- before that, one other thing too is I want to let everyone know just in case they're on their way somewhere um, and have to not tune in or maybe whatever, tune in later because I think with the last 10 minutes of our show today, um, we had an office meeting on Thursday and at the end of our office meeting, we always do um, in search of for, um, you know, our agents. I can't talk this morning. I will talk. So we had um, an office meeting and our agents, we have a ton of buyers. Our agents have a ton of buyers and there's no inventory. So we announced that we were going to um, c- create a list of everybody who has agent who has um, buyers looking for something here and we're going to announce that. So hopefully if you are a seller and you're sort of on the fence about selling, maybe we can convince you that, um, that we have a list of what, 20 buyers right now? now mm-hmm. that are looking for um, particular homes. So we're yeah. going to be announcing that at the end yeah. of the show. So like here's a good example. We'll just say, you know, one of our agents is looking for a single family in Bridgewater with lots of parking. So if you're in Bridgewater and you're listening, we're just going to give the office phone number at the end of the show uh, and have you get in touch with us. And then we have the list here. So mm-hmm. then we'll connect you with that agent directly. If that is something that you're selling um, or thinking about selling or want more information about the buyer, uh, then we'll connect you directly with that agent so um yeah that's gonna be good yeah and also you should say if if you have to drop off for whatever reason if you're in the car to head somewhere you can catch this again live Mm -hmm. through facebook on pembroke connect yeah yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. and our podcast app yeah Mm -hmm. boston connect i'm so glad she thought of that yeah i mean (laughs) well the thing is i listen to you guys sometimes when i'm not on the show and i'm driving somewhere but i get cut off because i'm driving Mm -hmm. the kids somewhere or whatever so then i just pop on pembroke connect later and check it out yeah awesome Okay. All right. So well, let's you, get going. Do you want to start it? Yeah. So, um, Emmy had come to me uh, last week or the week before and had, you know, a situation. It's not like a bad situation. It's just things that make you go, hmm, right? So, um, that's what prompted this whole conversation. And, you know, the things that you need to consider when you're coming on the market and, you know, the responsibility of the seller as well as the real estate agent when it comes to putting data. Let's just say that this part of it is putting data into MLS. So, as real estate agents, when we are putting your home on the market, we go through your home with you. You have lived there, you show us everything, and we're taking notes on everything and everything that you're saying. And sometimes, yes, you do forget things, but the major things you don't forget generally. Mm -hmm. So Emmy had a situation where she had a buyer client that was purchasing a home, and we won't say, but it's, you know, in the Plymouth County area, let's say. And they got the house under agreement and then um, had the home inspection. So, Emmy, why don't you take it from there? What happened? Okay, so we went through the home inspection. And after the conclusion of the home inspection, when we were still standing there talking to the home inspector, uh, my client pointed out that one of the reasons he had chosen to look at that particular house was because it was represented in the listing uh, as having central air. So he confirmed again with the inspector that, you know, throughout the course of the inspection that there wasn't any indicators whatsoever that there was central air in that home. So I went back and looked at the listing. It did, in fact, say that the property had central air, but we had just verified in person that it did not. Mm -hmm. So, and this is one of the things now we're in... And I'm going to give the phone number too. So if you have any questions about real estate in general or just this topic, feel free to give us a buzz. 781-837-4900. 781-837-4900. And Melissa will actually put that number in the Facebook uh, chat as well. Um, that's where I messed up last week without you. Okay. I will do that for you. <laughs> Everyone will, after the show, I see like all these messages. What's the number to call in? So... Um, you know, the situation is, is now your client put in the offer based on the fact that it had central air conditioning. It was sort of like a farm house, farm style house, right? Right. Yeah. So, you know, 
for those of you who don't know, a lot of A-frame type, you know, roof lines and things like that. Older home, mm-hmm. right? Yep. So really difficult to add central air conditioning into a home like that after the fact. Absolutely. So very, very costly. So Emmy was thinking, well, clearly it was a mistake, you know, that it's not in there. So you sort of had the grace to think about that because you are a real estate agent and things happen. Mm -hmm. Things like that shouldn't happen, but it did. And then you're thinking about your seller, I mean, your buyer, because your fiduciary responsibility is to him. And so what is really the value of this house? And one could argue it could cost $10,000 or more to put central air conditioning into this house. Right, absolutely. And that was his point. You know, he said, Emmy, I love the house, but when I made the offer for... X, Y, and Z, referring to the price, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought that I was getting a house with central air, and while the results of this inspection were overall great, um, you know, I'm still offering X, Y, and Z on a house that I thought had central air that doesn't. Mm -hmm. So that gets tricky, right? So now, and especially... I feel for buyers. We keep on talking about how we feel for buyers and we don't want buyers to feel pressured to buy something because they feel the pressure because there's no inventory. But he really was put between a rock and a hard place. He was. Yeah. So he really didn't have much. So my suggestion was, you know, to Emmy, you know, call the listing agent, you know, help her recognize what the mistake was, but also say that your client is looking for some type of a concession because of this mistake. Right. And ultimately... You know, days went by, and and that's the other thing, too, Emmy. I mean, I kept on saying, remember, stay in contract, like the dates, your purchase and sales agreement is due. If you don't get to that date, you have to do an extension and, you know, always protecting your client's deposit. Luckily and smartly, um, you had, you know, they were using Amy Masfar. I always say Amy (laughs) Masfar. Um, Amy from Sherman Law. Yeah, and she's been on the show before, too. Yeah. Yep, she is awesome. And, um, but the other side wasn't. Right, right, exactly. So there was no attorney representing the seller on the other side. And Amy is fantastic. I use her as often as possible. But, you know, she and I worked together to make sure that we were sticking with the dates of the contract. And, um, you know, protecting the, um, you know, the buyer here in this case. But, you know, it's just, it's hard because, you know, you're calling someone out on a mistake. Mm -hmm. So, hence why we decided to have this conversation today. Because mistakes happen, but ultimately, whose responsibility are they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, this... And there's been so many times where, what we've said this before, like, I bought a fridge on closing day or I bought this Mm -hmm. on closing day, you know, and those are sort of, I feel like, smaller um, purchases than having to purchase uh, an air conditioning unit. Mm -hmm. Um, But um, it's it's different than like, okay, I didn't know what type of wood it was, so I said it was hardwood, but it really wasn't hardwood. It was something else. That was a big thing back in the day. I mean, you guys were babies and probably not born when I started real estate. Yeah, I feel like something happened in the past seven years where like I'm so afraid to call anything hardwood. Like something something with you, like I feel like you instilled in me like don't call it hardwood if you don't know for sure it's yeah, hardwood. So I'm like, it's wood, it's a type of wood, it's something. Well, like it was back in the day um, was uh, I was getting my GRI, which is Graduate Real Estate Institute. is It's just a designation through National Association of Realtors. And I remember specifically in this one class that in, in our MLS, previously, you didn't have the option for just wood. It just, it was always hardwood. So this attorney was teaching the class, gave an example of, you know, an agent put in a new listing, you know, put off hardwood, blah, blah, blah. Go, you know, the house sells, the buyer then comes back and sues everybody involved and says, you said that this was hard wood and it's all pine and pine is a soft wood. Soft wood, yeah. So they got sued and he won and they had to replace the floors. Hmm. I'll never forget that. I'm so glad that I took that class because of that. So I kept on petitioning MLS and sending them like, can you please just put in wood? Because honest to God, like I grew up in Dorchester Ave, like we had cement like, I didn't know the difference between any trees and what's soft and hard. They all look pretty hard to me. I'm pretty sure if I, like, banged my head up against any, um, like, a yeah. maple tree, it's going to hurt, right? Yeah. Maple's hard. I think. Pine. Pine. Yeah. But a pine tree looks pretty hard. I, I think all trees look hard. <laughs> but that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. So boring. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but with that situation is, and this is where I sort of struggled a bit was, you know, as the seller, you know, reviewing this, 
And again, maybe it wasn't a suggestion. Maybe they didn't know any better. Maybe they weren't that concerned or that interested. As the seller, I would definitely notice if I looked at the MLS and said, it said central air conditioning, I would say, oh, no, no, I don't have central AC. I'm sorry that maybe I said that or that you misunderstood me. Or- yeah. I, I'm i just thinking, I'm going through like the, the house that I personally had a home inspection on, and there were things that were very evident to me that the seller had known that these things were not right or missing or broken or not working, and they weren't disclosed. As a real estate agent, I was sort of all right, I was okay with it, but once they kept piling up and piling up on top of the other things that I would have to take care of, that was when I was like, you know what, I think I'm going to back up. But it was, mm-hmm. you know, th- silly things like the broken window in the in the basement. Well, you know that the window's broken because you put up a curtain to hide it, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Right. Exactly. You, the fan in the bathroom wasn't working, but there was a piece of tape on it that said, please do not switch, switch okay, well, you don't want me to switch the switch because it's not working, right. <laughs> but you didn't disclose that it wasn't working. Right. Yeah. Stuff like that. You mm-hmm. know, these are things that, and and I feel like it happens a lot maybe with um, like microwaves and dishwashers when they're not working, but they're included in the sale. Mm-hmm. So if you, if you include these things in the sale, they have to be working. Mm-hmm. They have to be in working order unless you disclose, you know, that the dishwasher is not in working order, but it does, um, it is coming with the house. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, well, take it out. Yeah. <laughs> The dishwasher right. gurgles when you put it on, and yes. there's a stream going down your, mm-hmm. your down your kitchen. Um, so, in the end, what ended up happening with your client? You requested the money, and so we requested the money, and um, you know, there, there's kind of more to it than that. But we requested yep. the money, um, and we had a discussion with the seller side, and we came to an agreement. But um, you know, I would just say that, you know, the whole point of, of this topic is, you know, if I personally, me, myself, am going to list your house and I've got everything in MLS, I'm going to print it and show it to you mm-hmm. and sit down with you and say, is this correct? Is this correct? Is this correct? And, and that's something that if you're not doing that with your realtor, you know, and they just say, okay, hey, your house is now live, you know, go check it out mm-hmm. because, you know, you don't want to run into these things down down the road where it's a mistake, but it could be a costly one. That could be a very, very costly mistake. I mean, right. absolutely could be a costly mistake. And, and then you could end up in a 93A lawsuit and all kinds of things. I right. mean, you went forward and said, hey, guess what? I noticed this mistake. But if that had gone all the way to the closing and it wasn't in there, I wonder if a 93A fi- suit could have probably been filed. Right. And I mean, the thing is, you know, we're, we're all realtors, you know, for the most part, and we're, we're working together because we have a common goal. You know, mm-hmm. one, one of us is representing the seller and one of us is representing the buyer. And ultimately, we want the transaction to happen. So we, we tend to work things out. But, um, you know, I just feel like I would me as the listing agent or the seller, I I would just rather not deal with that. You know, I would rather make sure everything's all set up front. Yeah. I think I said this a couple of weeks ago, <clears throat> excuse me, that I would rather you tell me that something is wrong and I go into a situation knowing that, okay, this doesn't work or this is needs repair than to find out on my own and know that you knew the whole time. That's why like, I would rather you disclose everything that you possibly can to me because you might have an excuse or an answer as to why it's happening. And I feel like that happens a lot with like mold, Mm -hmm. with remediation and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Then for me to, you know, come in, do a home inspection and be like, how did you not see this? Like, Mm -hmm. then I feel like I've been deceptive like mm. I, I was deceived yeah well and that's the thing like if you're selling your home and you know certain things don't work like and and i'm not referring to the air conditioning case because i i know that that was a mistake but in your example of the dishwasher if you're mm-hmm. selling your home and you know your dishwasher is broken and you you don't mention that to your realtor hoping you know maybe we just make it through the closing line and somebody didn't know that it was broken one you know you're gonna you're gonna be hearing about it after mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and two i mean it let's say that gets caught in the home inspection immediately the buyer goes on the defensive like yeah. okay well they didn't tell me this dishwasher was broken so now they see this house with a whole different set of eyes mm-hmm. now it's like a mystery like okay let's find everything else yeah. that's broken in this house and now you've lost confidence mm-hmm. so i just i highly what recommend what else are you hiding you right. know so that's, that's what it turns into yeah. it's yeah. like okay what's behind the next door you know so the mentality shifts on all parts as soon as you find one thing that's broken 
you know, everybody's perspective, mine, the inspectors, then the buyers are like, okay, well, what else don't we know about? So don't do mm-hmm. that to yourself as a seller. You know, yeah. it's mm-hmm. okay. Like nobody's house is perfect. We know that. Yeah. yeah, because you can fall back and say, my house is um, priced to the condition that it's in. Mm-hmm. The, the, the microwave doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Right. Literally, I don't even have to be here. Everything I've thought you've said. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I was just going to say that because that's what we say to our clients. Like, just let us know everything because we can then disclose it and say, you know, these are the items that are no longer working or like the windows are older and things like that. The house is priced according to the condition it's in. So when you come back to me after home inspection and say, hey, the dishwasher isn't working properly, we can say, we know that. Well, that's what happened to me personally. So now I can say this, you know, I I put my offer in at at what I felt the condition of the house was before my home inspection came and I had a home inspection. The condition was different than what I thought it was. I thought I was being pretty reasonable and ended up walking away. They ended up selling for less than I was offering. So they made less money because probably somebody came in and said, no, this is not what the condition of the house is in. This is what I would give you. And, you know, so they were sort of in a time crunch, but, you know, they could have just... Oh, time. Oh, Mm -hmm. it's already 1030. Tam, I think we're going to take a a quick break. Is that okay? Of course it is. It's your show. Oh, 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 it's (laughs) my show. You can do whatever you want. All right, perfect. You're listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. We have Emmy Flaherty here today with us. Um, We are going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Let's face it. We all get to the point in our lives when our current home no longer suits our everyday needs. With ever-changing living dynamics, addressing your future is all about right-sizing. You know, finding the right size home for you right now. Do you dread the change of the New England seasons? Do you get irritated when you have to take your boat out of the water and wish you had warm weather all year long? Are you tired of the hassle of snow removal and you're ready to fly south for the winter? Let us help you find the right size for you right now. I'm Sharon McNamara, the broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate. If you would like a one-on-one consultation with me and my team or one of the dedicated agents at Boston Connect Real Estate to discuss your real estate needs, you can connect with us at bostonconnect.com or 781-826-8000. We now return to Talk Real Estate, sponsored by Boston Connect Real Estate Services on 95.9 WATD. And we're back. You are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. I'm getting yelled at over here. <laughs> um, but we are it's joined. G- gentle yelling. Gentle, gen- gentle yes. yelling. I'm being shouted at, I guess, maybe. Um, I was bad. Sorry. Um, you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. We are joined by Emmy Flaherty, full-time realtor here at Boston Connect Real Estate. And we're talking about things to consider when um, you're putting your house on the market. Sort of from a, a seller's perspective. Yeah, absolutely. So we were just talking about, you know, verifying everything that's in MLS is accurate. And, you know, and sometimes it's simple things. Well, you think it's simple or maybe your agent isn't familiar with the difference between, let's just say, forced hot water and forced hot air. It's, it's a big thing. But maybe some agents don't know the difference, or maybe they're having an assistant put in the information, which was the situation with you. Right, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, you you definitely were very lenient on that situation because we understand that mistakes happen. But I also think that sellers, you should be taking deep concern looking at those because, again, when lawsuits come back, and we never want lawsuits, uh, but people are human, and um, just to look those things over. Yeah. We okay. are human. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, oh, hello, Virginia. That's for later. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, buyers looking. Oh, yeah. So if more, you're just more buyers, yeah, yeah, so more if, buyers. Yeah, just joining us. Make sure you stay until the end. The last ten minutes of the show. I don't even know. We might need more time. <laughs> sure. um, Looks we, like it. Yeah, we got together a list because we were having an office meeting this week, and we have a lot of our agents have clients in search of homes. So we're going to put it right out there. If you have what they're looking for, we're going to give you our phone number, and we're going to connect you directly to to that agent so you can talk to them um, about selling your home to their client. <laughs> yeah. And I, something that I always hear is like, well, I won't put my house on the market because I don't have anything to buy. But if everybody puts their houses on the market, then there are things to buy. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And you can do contingencies. We did a yeah. show on that recently. Yeah. Right. And then there's new construction. Yeah, of course. <laughs> new construction. Absolutely. Um, okay. Sorry. I cut you off. No, no, you didn't. I was, I was just looking down at our agenda. 
Oh, yeah. Well, okay. where we left off was basically, you know, so we're using the word disclose, but, you know, basically what we're saying is, is when you're sitting down with a listing agent and, and you're having the discussion about putting your house on the market, you know, the question your listing agent, aka realtor, should be asking you is, you know, tell me about your house. You know, I go through a list of all of the different um, systems in the home, try to get some of the ages, but at the same time, that's when I would say to you, you know, is there anything broken? Is there anything I need to know about, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so that's basically disclosing or telling us, you know, what you know about the home so that when we get asked questions, you know, having open houses, et cetera, oh, yes, you know, my seller told me about that. Here's the background because, yeah. you know, that's giving the buyer confidence that, mm -hmm. you know, you know about the house, you're able to answer questions about the house and that you're being, um, you know, forward and open about stuff that's happened. Mm -hmm. Pe people want honesty, whether you're a buyer or a seller, they want you to be honest and just, and I love the way that Sharon does open houses. I've, I've gone to visit her um, for several years that, you know, if something is not um, in working order or needs repair or something, she's very upfront and like matter of fact about it. And if you're matter of fact about it, it, you're just giving them the information. What they do with that information is up to them, but at least you told them mm -hmm. and they're they're going into their um, you know, walkthrough or whatever with an open mind. And too, you know, my you know, my mindset as being a listing agent is I'd rather that people know about this stuff up front because I don't want to get to the process where I'm working with a buyer you know, with another agent, you know, and their buyer, they weren't familiar with what something was. I can't even think of something in the house right now, but, you know, if they're not familiar with it, then I'm going to get all the way to like your home inspection and then we're going to find out. So I potentially lost other viable buyers for my client's right. home. Yeah. So that's why I say like recently we had one over on Furnace uh, Lane and it had two sump pumps and one of the sump pumps had recently broken and I told them, you know, my husband came over um, and he, you know, what did he do? He like snaked, snaked out the it. drain yeah. and he did all this work. And that's the other thing. We had all the warranty information and stuff like that. So just, just yeah. disclose. Oh, well, speaking of warranty information, if you have any of your, um, you know, things serviced in your house, always keep the receipts and keep like anything that you have so you can prove, th th especially for pools. Mm -hmm. We've said this before, um, but anything, um, your heating system, if you have, you know, somebody come out and, and clean it or look at it, um, anything service related, keep all those receipts because then you can be like, you know, yeah, I have maintained these mechanicals and the, the more you maintain them the longer that they last. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, I was going to say on my last listing in Bridgewater, you know, the seller said to me, hey, you know, the faucet on the bathroom sink is really loose. Um, and sometimes as a result, it drips. So what did we do? We just replaced it before it went on the market, you mm -hmm. know, done. Yeah. Um, we yeah. have problem solved instead of, you know, people coming in and jiggling the handle and perhaps wiggling, uh, wiggling, uh, worsening the problem, mm -hmm. you know? So it's just stuff like that. That's what we're here to do to help you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we work together as a really good team, then, you know, you're putting your best foot forward. And that's one of the things, too, that I love about our office, too, is everybody has somebody that can, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I was, actually, I was talking to... Um, an agent last night and discussing what her husband does and I was like wow between your husband and Emmy's husband and Kate's husband and your my husband. husband you know and then we have other like son-in-laws for electricians <laughs> Sharon manifested a husband for me yesterday oh, good. She's like, oh, what and does eventually he do? your husband yeah what does my husband do yeah. I think he's an electrician an electrician yeah. okay yes. yeah we're gonna we find that. him we need an electrician in we the do house. Oh, okay <laughs> so if you're single and you're, you're an electrician, electrician. Yeah. <laughs> call in with a question for us. Yeah. Yep. And tomorrow's Melissa's birthday, by the way. Ooh. It is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 So, tomorrow's okay. So we'll yeah. revamp this. If you're single and you're an electrician and you'd like to take this lovely woman out <laughs> to dinner tomorrow. Yes. Or in the near right. future, please call in. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> last week we were asking for a house. This week we're yeah. asking for yeah. a man. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, last week we were begging for a house. I, mean, I would never beg for a man, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we'll ask politely well, for right. one. That's funny. We should tell 
people we believe in manifestation. We do in manifestation. manifestation. Yes, yeah, so we do. We we say things out loud intentionally because we believe <laughs> that if we verbalize them, we put no. them out in the universe, they will come. They will come. This is my new thing. Is every day I see Melissa in her house. She did this. Oh, Doesn't I it sit at my desk. Like I'm in my house. I'm on board, I'm on board too. I'm in my house. house. We're in her house. We're in Melissa's so. house. It's an A frame check for A frame. J frame. J frame. A frame check for central air. Oh, yeah, check yeah. for central air. Okay. Um, so again, and the, the other thing too is, and we were just having this conversation with um, Ginny Wandell, who is a full-time real estate agent here at Boston Connect uh, Real Estate as well. She's in the office. Uh, she tends to sit here every Saturday morning, by the way. So if you're in the area, <laughs> stop on by. Um, she's not just sitting here. She's waiting for someone to come in who would like to chat with her yeah. about buying or selling their home or hearing about the market. <laughs> yeah. And she has some tasty treats in there. So I, I would definitely pop in. I know. Karen. Karen Monroe is listening and she um, commented on Facebook and she is saying that an electrician would spark up my life. Ooh. <laughs> oh, and she gave us a wave. Hi, Karen. Thank you. Karen. Yes. Karen. That's so funny. <laughs> that, that works. Yes. So um, back to the, with, when you're looking at your MLS sheet and we were talking, as I started to say, we were talking to Ginny about this earlier and there are sometimes discrepancies between what your public record says and what your MLS says. And there's a difference between what public record says and how we market a home and all that. So that's really like a full-blown conversation. But um, one of the things is a lot of times public record may not have the correct information. So I was talking to one of our agents actually in the office a couple weeks ago who's potentially getting a new listing as well or is getting a new listing. And the problem was is they didn't. Uh, pull a permit potentially Mm -hmm. and so when and I said well just so you know if I'm a buyer's agent this is what you have to think about especially people who haven't sold your home in a very long time things have changed (laughs) they've changed in the last 10 years they've changed in the last 20 years for sure we can see all this information now so if I go online especially as a buyer's agent I'm going to go online if public record says that you have a three bedroom home but you're marketing as a four bedroom home because you finished your attic space i'm not talking specifically about this listing by the way i'm just giving an example the first thing as a buyer's agent that i'm going to do is i'm going to go to town hall and i'm going to see if a permit was pulled for that fourth bedroom Mm -hmm. and i'm also going to go to the board of health and i'm going to verify if you're in an area where it's all septic that you have a four bedroom septic Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. So these are the things that are and really. Why is that? Why would that be important to a buyer? But because if you have a four bedroom home and a three bedroom septic system, basically, according to the regulations of Title V and Board of Health, the flow of water that goes through, it's per bedroom. It's not per bathroom. So you could have a two bedroom house and 15 bathrooms if you wanted. The way that they're calculating it is, oh, chances are there could be two people in In each each one of those bedrooms, right? Mm -hmm. So the flow of water. And things have changed over the years and everything, too. But we're going to be doing a um, septic Mm -hmm. uh, show soon, too. So uh, we'll get more into that as well. But you, if you didn't do it, I always say, first of all, we had, you had a show with Tracy. There, yeah. There's no big deal on getting a permit. Yeah. 50, 75 bucks. Yeah. A couple hundred, but depending then, on oh, whatever then it is that my, you're doing. Then my assessment's going to go up. Well, guess what? If you don't open the door to the assessor, they're going to assume that you have the best of the best anyways. So you might as well yeah. just be forthright with it. And then it isn't an issue when you go to sell your home. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. There were um, somebody, just getting back to septics for two seconds, somebody had sent me um, a coming soon of of a house that they had personally been in before and said, you know, it's really small. It is two bedroom, but it's a one bedroom septic. And I was like, not interested. Mm-hmm. Um, even if I lived there alone for a couple of years, I would eventually want to rent it out. And I'm just not going to take on the responsibility of renting it out to more than one person with a one bedroom septic system, but saying I have two bedrooms and you know it's just like it, especially for the price so i was mm-hmm. like no I'm, I'm i'm good thank you not even gonna look at it yeah and the septic is really important too because i mean if you're marketing a home as a four-bedroom home and it has a three-bedroom septic once that the attorneys are going to see that anyways but you have to have the title five report mm-hmm. the appraiser is going to see it everybody is going to see it yeah you know it isn't it, we're not in the days where things sort of slide by right now so 
and potentially, hey, it matters how far in you're into it. I mean, not, it's really increasing. You could have a 1,500-gallon tank, but you have to increase the leaching field to make it a four-bedroom. And again, that's why you hire professional agents to be listing your home, like Emmy Flaherty, who we have on our show today. Emmy is a full-time real estate agent here at Boston Connect Real Estate, and uh, she has lots of things coming up in her agenda. She loves, loves, loves to do events. She's doing cookies in March. She has some candle making going on. She's doing uh, dog pictures with the Easter bunny, um, and then she does a lot of stuff with the PTO and things like that coming up. Uh, I want to make sure we give Emmy's phone number directly right now. Is that okay with you? Yeah, of course. Yeah, all right. So it's 781-217-4580, 781-217-4580. Um, so if you're interested in finding out more about any of her events, uh, give her a call directly. But more importantly, if you're thinking about buying or selling a home, she services the whole entire area. So that's why we're called Boston Connect Real Estate. We're connecting Boston to the South Shore, to the South Coast, all the way down to the Cape. Dedham, she'll go wherever you need to be. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> We're making your moves, you know, love where you live, right? So yep. we'll go wherever that is. Uh, so give Emmy a call and even just to have a conversation in order to get. So my daughter, Casey, uh, actually had a conversation with Jasmine uh, Mendez this um, this week because she isn't ready to buy a house yet. But I said to her, Case, I mean, honestly, like you were basically born into this. How many times have you heard me say in order to get to where you're going, you need to know where you are? Right. Right. So she's she knows she's a couple of years out from wanting to buy something. But even if people want to have that start of a conversation with you. Absolutely. You need to kind of figure out where you are, where you want to be and how, what you need to do to get there. Yep. Absolutely. Let's talk because we, we definitely want to do that at the end. So, Emmy, are there sp any other are there specific things that you want to talk about for the, like five minutes here that uh, so we don't, you know, shadow anything that you wanted to discuss today? Well, I, I know we're talking here about maybe adding bedrooms and not necessarily getting the permits and stuff for that, but I actually had the reverse situation in Plymouth where somebody took down a wall mm -hmm. um, because they wanted it to be more open, but they didn't realize in doing so that they basically, that was no longer a bedroom. So when it came to appraisal time, we, we had a lot of issues mm -hmm. because it went from being... Um, what was considered a one bedroom it was a small one level home but it was considered a one bedroom but what they did was they took down um two of the walls so it was open but there was one wall there for privacy but obviously it's one bedroom so it's yeah. it was just a young couple living by themselves but then when the appraisal time came so the mortgage lender came out to um sent the appraiser out to to check he was like this isn't a one bedroom this is mm -hmm. basically like a studio house mm -hmm. uh, um and that was unusual because you know well, there are not many studio houses yeah. so trying to come up with a price and then we had to go back and forth do we put the wall back up um which the buyer didn't want to do nor neither did the seller but things like that so if you're making mm -hmm. modifications to your home just keep in mind that you need to have those discussions with us when you get ready to sell absolutely yeah. we did a show on that just a couple shows ago where we said you know home improvement home improvement should i or shouldn't i and that's why i always say call us in i mean this is what we do full time so we definitely are the ones that will have the best information for mm -hmm. you um and then like back to the assessments in the bedrooms and you know a lot of people get a little confused with like the lower levels and things like that so you just have to really you know lean into your real estate agent you know to talk about that can you call something a bedroom if it's under under the um, below, grade. Below, below, grade below grade and things like that so um what other things are there that you might want to discuss because that was a good one well, we also have the cleaning and staging, which is another huge part of this. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I've had a lot of people tell me, I'd like to sell my home and I want top dollar, but I'm really, really busy. And, um, you know, can we just like photograph it as is? So, you know, that's another discussion to have. Yeah. And that we could do another show on that, Emmy, too, yeah. about like just, you know, staging. And we would usually do that in the spring and spring cleaning. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing, too, is I keep on saying, looking at what I want to say and then I keep on losing it. Um, but when it comes to photographs, this is a big one. It is. <laughs> You know what? There are so many things that you can do. <laughs> I just want to let everybody know that there's so much you can do with photographs now, and there's virtual staging. And I went to a, a um, CMA that I was referred to somebody uh, maybe last year, and the house, 
you know, it, it needed some love, um, but it, things weren't broken. It just wasn't cosmetically what people are looking for right now. Right. And they said that they wanted me to do some virtual, you know, staging in the house. And I said, well, how would we do virtual staging like this? Your furniture is here. Right. And they said, well, there is, you know, another company that is willing to do that. And I said, I'm sure that there is. I was like, every, it's not wrong. It's just everybody does things differently. And my mindset on that is, boy, are people going to be disappointed when they walk in the door? I didn't say it that way to them, but yeah. you're, it's almost like a bait and switch type thing. Right. right. I, yeah. I've, I've been in that situation where we've gone to homes that have been virtually staged and... Um when you see it in person, it, it, they're like, this is not the same house. It's not the same house. It, it, it has different flooring. Yeah. It has <laughs> different it's colors. It, light it has fixtures. Light fixtures, yeah. Roof. It's, this is what this house could be. That's what the, the title should be. I'm not yeah. even kidding. I went to look at one house and this master, quote unquote, master bedroom looked phenomenal. We could not wait to see it. It was an old garage. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. It, it was, they had taken what was the garage, put down like the floating flooring and we, we, we were just shocked Emmy honest to God like I I love you to pieces <laughs> we could and I I actually I was talking to somebody yesterday and I was like I'm changing her mindset because you you have the craziest things we every week we could do a show on <laughs> like, Emmy topic what Emmy has seen <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Emmy this week <laughs> I know I like I have seen some of the most bizarre stuff but you know what it just makes uh, me that much better because I'm on to it when I see I it I have got to tell you I'm so happy you came into my life because oh, you actually you. you're the best like a um, emoji person too. Oh, like, I love my emojis. You, you really like you get like I can feel the feeling through your emojis, yep. which is really funny. Um, but yes, definitely. You know, in with uh, vacant properties, it's really nice to do that virtual staging because you can show this is what the house looks like vacant, but this is an idea of what it looks like with furniture because sometimes people just can't visualize that. Mm -hmm. So, what our point of today's thing was, you know, definitely make sure that you're looking at your MLS sheet and verifying the information is accurate and you know because it's really important we don't want any of our clients in particular to have any lawsuits so um, and then we'll do a synopsis of everything that we were talking about today I'm not even sure if we talked about all five but maybe Emmy could do a blog yeah, and we absolutely. can get that out there as well um, but what we want to do for the last nine minutes of our show mm -hmm. yes so we're we had an office meeting, so if you haven't heard me say this yet, we had an office meeting on Thursday, and inventory is low. It's low throughout the country, and it's low here. And, you know, we know that people are considering putting their home on the market, or maybe they haven't considered it. They just don't know what to do. We were going, we always go around our, and every Friday we put it in our newsletter to in search of, so what our agents are looking for for their clients, and we're also doing uh, coming soons. So our agents know what's coming on the market before everybody else. They're not mm -hmm. on the market yet, but we're sort of talking about them. So we have a full list, yeah. we're going to go through it, mm -hmm. of homes that our agents have clients for, okay? They are pre-approved, they are have been in the process for a while mm -hmm. looking for these homes so we're going to give the towns and then we're just going to give our phone number at the end yeah and we have the list here so if when you call us we can say maybe it's an email let's do an email because if we're not around this weekend it might okay. get a little confusing so let's just give the administration mm -hmm. okay yeah administration at bostonconnect.com yep. and um, we'll connect you with the right agent. But you know what? I'm going to go first because this is our show. Um, so I am personally in search of um, something under 400000 in Plymouth County. Um, it could be two bedrooms, um, two, three bedrooms. I do uh, want a basement. So something with a basement. I don't need a garage. Um, it can be under a 1,000 square feet. I don't need much space. Um, it's just me and my cat. Um, um, but I would like a yard, um, some sort of um, outdoor area. But um, yeah, just something f under 400, two bedroom mm -hmm. with a basement in Plymouth County. That's what I'm looking for. I'm pre, I'm, 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 I'm there. Yes. I can close as soon as possible, or I can wait. I'm, yeah. I'm, so she is very flexible on time. Very flexible. And on tomorrow time. is Melissa's birthday. And tomorrow so is my we birthday. Think that you should yes. let her know. So if you have yes. a house, what about Emmy? Do you want to go first? Do you have clients sure. that you want oh. to talk about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's the uh, Emmy have the stage first. Today's her day. 
Thank you. Well, uh, because I live and work here in Pembroke, I have many buyers that are looking for properties in Pembroke. So if you are listening and you are thinking about buying and, and selling, please give me a call. But um, I actually have a couple that is getting married in June. They have been looking for almost two years now. They really want a three or four bedroom colonial here in Pembroke. Um, they would like to have a garage. They would like some yard. They are pre-approved. They are very financially sound and they would really like to be into a home before their wedding. Mm -hmm. So if this matches your description, please call. Yep. This is kind of like house mass make matchmaking. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh yeah. yeah, we should come up with an app. 781-217-4580. Yes. That's Emmy's number directly. So we'll give you that one because <coughs> she's you. right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. 781-217-4580. Yeah. Are we going down the list now? Yep. Yes. Okay, so we have Team Flynn, so Trish and Nick Flynn. We're not giving all the agent names. I think it will get too confusing, just what we're looking okay. for. Okay, do you want to do it then? Nope, I don't. <laughs> okay, so 500,000 single family in Pembroke, Hanson, Plimpton, Halifax, Middleborough, Bridgewater, East Bridgewater, Whitman, Abington, Rockland. Uh, three bedrooms in good condition with a great yard that backs up to woods, preferably. 2.4 million single family home in Concord. They're looking for a four or five bedroom, three to four baths with an office space. Um, another home, 450,000 single family in Bridgewater, lots of parking, um, looking for land up to 200,000 surrounding communities, ideally Bridgewater, um, and then uh, $290,000 for a condo in East Bridgewater, Bridgewater, Easton, Norton, Taunton, Raynham, Whitman. Um, another agent has a client looking up to $1.25 million. No other description of the there. So if you have a house, any <laughs> any price range up to $1.25, any town, doesn't matter, apparently. Um, another agent um, looking for a single family up to $5 million in Duxbury. Um, PowerPoint or Standish Shore preferred. Mm -hmm. um, and then another uh, client of theirs is looking for an in law around Plymouth up to 850. Mm -hmm. um, another agent we have, it, they are looking for a ranch with an in law up to 800,000, um, preferably the in law not in the basement. I am also uh, have a client that is looking for an in law in Pembroke. Okay. Specifically. Um, another uh, buyer, cash buyer, up to 400000 looking for a home, uh, needs a garage. A three or four bedroom colonial in Duxbury, Kingston, Norwell, Hanover, up to $1.1 million. Again, if any of these descriptions are your home, please um, email administration at bostonconnect.com. Another um, client is looking for a five-bedroom home or an in-law up to $500,000, um, can need work. Um, that's fine. Mm -hmm. they, they're, they're willing to put in some sweat equity in there. Um, and then they also have another client looking for a home on the river or water up to $2 million, and those are cash buyers. Um, Another agent, anything up to uh, anything under 340, a condo or single family. Um, another agent, single family with an in law in Braintree, Milton area, up to 1.2 million. Um, and then another agent has a client looking for a coastal home with j j two bedrooms, one level preferred near the water, but doesn't have to be on the water. Um, and then oh, another agent. See, we have. Plenty. Plenty of buyers. <laughs> we have lots of... These are all buyers who are pre-approved looking for homes. Yeah. Um, one of our agents has a client with nothing to sell, cash up to five fifty. Um, another client of theirs is has already sold their home. They're just waiting. Um, they are cash up to $700,000. Um, they are looking for a first, first floor um, with a... What does that say? Master bath. Main bedroom. Main and bedroom bath. and bath. Um, a garage or room to put one. Um, move in ready. Either buyer will do some work. Okay. Um, locations would be uh, Braintree, Weymouth, uh, South Shore, Plymouth County. Um, another buyer of theirs is looking uh, three plus bedroom Cape Colonial up to 650 in Hanson, Halifax, Pembroke, Hanover, Kingston. Um, move in ready with some work um, needed is okay. And then we have a two bedroom up to 400,000 Plymouth, Carver, Middleborough, Pembroke, Hanson, Halifax. 
Um, and then another client looking for a two plus bedroom with 1.5 acres or more up to 500,000. Perfect. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll put a whole full list together and we'll put that on our website at bostonconnect.com. So if you have any, um, if you heard, usually we went pretty fast there, but you know what your house is. So if you're like, oh yeah, I am definitely the person who has a four bedroom colonial with a car, uh, with at least a one car garage, you know to call Emmy, right? And then um, for everybody else, if you heard the description of your house and you are thinking about, you know, selling it, these are all buyers who are currently in the market looking for homes. Uh, so you can go to administration uh, at bostonconnect.com. Just leave us your information. Tell us what type of house you have. We'll line you up with our real estate agent in our office. Uh, so you can, you know, c- connect directly with that person and talk about selling your home to their client. Uh, Emmy Flaherty, thank you again. again. Thank you, ladies. We are so happy to have you. 781-217-4580 is Emmy's phone number or Emmy at bostonconnect.com. Again, you can catch all of our past shows. And uh, real quick, I need to let you know that Mel and Kristen Howlett, full-time real estate agent here at Boston Connect, will be on Tuesday with Christine Fisk of Harbor One. They're going to be talking about their home buyer workshop, which is happening on 226, which is the su- next Sunday. And uh, Kristen's number is 617-448-4896. So give her a call. We'll see you on Tuesday. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye, Tim. Bye-bye. Bye. ATD FM Marshfield, WBMS Brockton.